What is a successful life? Well, in today's topical talkology talk, this is what we are going to discuss today. Morning, Theo. Good morning. How are you? I'm great. And yourself? Very, very good. I've been catching up my sleep. Yeah, actually, I slept well last night, and we actually had a hard gym session this morning, so mm-hmm. feeling pretty sore. Anyway, let's get started. So, what is a successful life to you, Theo? Well, first of all, why are we talking about a successful life? Because last week we covered the determines success, and quite rightly, one of my one of my friends messaged me back and he said that may be the case but what's a successful life and of course he is absolutely right and i have a another of my uh, friends who so the, the, so the two listeners that we actually yeah, have are your friends so another of my friends right. <laughs> no, was telling me was asking my advice because he is abroad and he's working and his job is perfectly good and he has got a lovely family with two children. He's got a house. He's, he's bought another house that he's renting out. And he is not entirely happy. He's, he's, he's grieving the, uh, the, a really enjoyable career where he says he shines. The job he's doing now is very good, very responsible. Um, but he doesn't particularly like his employers. They're okay. Uh, but he doesn't feel as if he's shining and developing and really maximizing his potential. And the difficulty is, though, if he goes for one of his original jobs, they're not in the same country anymore, so he'll have to travel and not be with his family. So I said to him, I said to him, okay, well, we're here on this planet to reproduce. And the most important thing is therefore family and our extended family, our community. I said to him, I said to him, let's have a very careful think. First of all, what is a career? Because he's, he's obviously want, wanting this amazing career that gives him this ultimate pleasure and satisfaction and fulfillment. And I said, did you know that 2% of all jobs are a career? The rest of them are just jobs, 98%. And the definition of a job is something you wouldn't do unless you were paid. That's what a job is. So therefore, 98% of the population are simply doing something mm. they don't even particularly like in order to live and have a family. Well, ju- judging by what you're saying, it, it seems to me that he um, he is not really f- fulfilled in his, in his role. I mean, he probably likes it. He can probably meet up to the challenge. He could probably even enjoy it. Doesn't like his employers, which means there's probably one of the things. If you read between the lines, is there's a lack of significance there, um, particularly because he hasn't got the autonomy to be able to do what he wants. If he actually has to be concerned about his employers, which <coughs> means he's not producing enough serotonin, which is what significance actually gives you but you see it's all in the mind isn't it because it is it, because is, it is perception yeah but it's also it's also production because uh, one of the things I did look uh, one of the things I did look at recently at um, in terms of being happy what do you actually have to produce to be happy what, what, what what's the chemical balance that you have to produce to be happy and one of the things is we talk about we've talked about it in the past dopamine which is the which is a which is the uh, which is about reward you've got serotonin which is to do with significance um, endorphins as well uh, what else is there those are the two main things and of the, course the, the, you want to yeah. minimize your cortisol as well all right but 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 uh, and he's gone off the ball and he's made a few mistakes at work I said to him, imagine you didn't have any work at all imagine you were just about to lose your house and suddenly someone said how about this job that you're doing now he said I said wouldn't you go and kiss it wouldn't you go and grasp it and embrace it and and sparkle he yeah, said, actually, I would. But, You're but right. Then, but then again, no, well, would he? Because the thing is, you, you go, uh, you've got to understand that when you're coming from a place of scarcity and you're making decisions in a place of scarcity or fear-based... You're all. You're never going to be happy. You're never going to. You're never going to feel successful. You 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 are just literally working to survive. But you're that's not it. He'll be to grow. He, that the key thing is, as you say, how you you said successful at work, but we're now saying a successful life. That's correct. And I said to him, I said to him, you'd be grateful for that job, wouldn't you? You wouldn't be resenting it. You'd be thinking of leaving it, would you? So that you wouldn't even see your family for four or five days a week. And he said, my God, you're absolutely right. I need to think about this again. Going back to happiness and pleasure, we talked about this a few podcasts ago. Happiness is serotonin, pleasure is dopamine. And the more pleasure you seek, the less serotonin you have. So the more pleasure you seek, the less happy you are. So we need to bear that in mind because ultimately, ultimately, what we really all seek is peace of mind. And pleasure never gives you peace of mind because pleasure is an emotion and emotions are unstable. 
Yeah, but, but peace of mind only lasts so long, you see, Theo. That's true. Um, but it lasts. But but emotion is even more fickle. Do you know? Do you know they, they talk about. You see, you see, most people crave security. They they want certainty that things are going to be okay. They want that roof over there. This is the this is the this is the stage of what you talk about survival. What do we need for survival? We need shelter. We need food. We need water. Um, things like yeah. this. Air, and, and we right? need and we so need. So when we've got the certainty of that, we're actually we're actually fine. But what happens is that once we've got that. There's no variety in your life, and it gets boring. I mean, I'll, I'll put it to you in this case. If you were told that for the next 30 years you've got to have the same meal for the rest of your life, I've got to say, in this day and age, I mean, going back, going, going back, you know, 50,000 years ago to the old Liverpool ball game, you know, luck if you can catch whatever you can. But in this day and age, if you were told that you actually had to eat the same meal every single day for the rest of your life, morning, noon, and night, I've got to say, you're going to get pretty bored. And then you're going to start becoming unfulfilled. We need variety, but we also need certainty for us to actually have growth, to actually have fulfillment. But the difficulty is, well, when we talked about this before, is variety, mm, okay, not quite sure about that completely, but too much choice, too much variety is bad for you. And we, we discussed this. It makes you dissatisfied with your choices because you always question yourself. Have you got any new experiences? Where, 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 so where you see, where, again, this is where we're where, where effectively doing uh, some some uh, we're, we're introspective masturbation because at the end of the day... Uh, easy, Tiger. At the end of the day, we're cavemen and cavemen are on the planet to reproduce and survive now if if you were to ask if you were to ask an ethiopian famine victim or an auschwitz survivor whether they minded having a full meal the same meal every day for the rest of their lives they would go thank you very much you're a wonderful person but that, I, I, that I, I also say i also say in this day and age yeah that's a one extreme okay. obviously so and you, you are a, a bit of variety is okay but i think well I is think it superfluous I mean, we must be careful not to become excessively superfluous. Okay, be, be, be careful a second, because the thing is, we talk about, you talk about caveman, and you talk about, um, you know, and it's all about survival. But even then, you know, they didn't go out of the savannah and actually have the same experience every single day. One day they would have actually had to escape from a saber-toothed tiger, the next day they would probably have to escape from something else. Um, they would have had a different experience every day and that level of adrenaline that level of fear that they would have gone through and that fear and that um, and the variety they had also kept them going but it was, it was, it was a fairly defined set of criteria which affected their lives and once the, as we said all of us have a certain level of arousal every living organism has arousal which keeps you alive because if you weren't aroused, you wouldn't be alert to escape predators. If you weren't aroused, you wouldn't be motivated to get your basic needs for survival. So, so, so okay, that, that actually, I'll, I'm going to jump in there. So, if you actually do the same job in, day in and day out when you go into work, are you going to be aroused? No, that's different. No, it's not, is it? No, no, that's pleasure. That's pleasure and uh, the, the, the job you, gives you satisfaction if, and pleasure. If we you have actually had a basic to do, level okay, of let me put it in. Let, okay, let, let's go to the other thing. If you actually had to punch in data into a computer every single day, I mean, taking the techie thing aside, and you did the same thing every single day for the rest of your, your life, mm -hmm. there's going to come a point where you're going to you experience total boredom every single day. And then you're, not gonna be, you're going to be less productive. But the likelihood is that you wouldn't be doing that because there would be some kind of uh, advancement in your career. Really? Hopefully. You ask, the, you ask the factory worker who's been doing that same job for the last 30 years. Even a factory worker will start off as the, as the, as the I guess, the basic assistant and then, and then go up. And, there's there's got to be a level of stimulation and there. And then someone will say, well, you've done enough, you've, you've, done, you've, done, you've painted enough cups, now go to the furnace. So you will get, you'll be put around the factory and do different jobs. Of course you will. Of course. But they need, you need to be stimulated. You need to be stimulated by your environment. You need to be stimulated by a variety of but different the, things. Now we're, talking about, to, now we're talking about the job again. But we're talking about happiness. And talking about peace happiness. of mind. You see, don't mistake the two. You've got to have both. You've got to have variety. You've got to, sorry, I, I'm jumping in here. You've got, to have, you've got to be stimulated. Yeah, you've also got to want that certainty. Mm. And that is the balance. And, and finding the right balance between that to actually have 
what's called a successful life. It's not always about wealth. It's correct. But you see, the, going, going back to what we said about arousal, arousal is a basic state of everything. And, and you, that arousal is there to, as I said, make us survive. But in today's world, there aren't any predators and we have a basic need to survive, but we still have a, the arousal which doesn't know what it, what it to do with itself so therefore it looks for illusionary needs illusionary predators and and of course it's full of that isn't it it could be get a new job get a newer girlfriend get in get get a new handbag get get some more makeup get your nails done a different color all these things are illusionary needs and of course when you get them you realize you never needed them so they're not you often get a sense of anticlimax rather than the pleasure that you were seeking and the pursuit of that gives you less mind so this is what we are as humans we're on a treadmill now of of in fact the corporations making money out of us and of course we're getting more and more happy more pleasure that we're told that we need to seek and pay for peace of mind is more of a state of mind because peace of mind is a skill that one has to acquire because peace of mind is an acceptance of your situation an acceptance of for, I'll give you an example the wisest people will look for the good enough and they'll say this is good enough I'm happy with that I'm now going to concentrate on my on my family and my community and be as fantastic a father a husband a community member as I can be and that will that will promulgate the peace of mind because as i said to you as, as i said to you the the study of the italian immigrants in ohio back in the in the 1950s showed that this this immigrant italian community in, in america had the lowest rate of cardiac events in the country and it wasn't because of the diet it wasn't because of exercise because they exercised less and ate worse it was a strong family network with three generations living in the same house and everyone having their everyone being supported to each other and honoring each other that's a very different environment to where we are particularly in the uk and if you go to places like the state i mean actually in in europe now um things are becoming far more competitive and far more aggressive far disaster. more overcrowded because of globalization and things but like you know, this it's a disaster and and one should one should be very cognizant of the fact that every single organization corporate and civilization the lifespan follows a sigmoid curve in other words it starts slowly accelerates very very rapidly and then plateaus off and then dies and unless we're careful we're going that way nothing is a forever Apple and Microsoft will be dust in the not too distant future well look the thing is you've got to learn to adapt to your environment adapt to your marketplace um, I'll give you an example. Last week, or a couple of weeks ago, it snowed over here. And it was pretty bad. And you've got to learn to adapt. You can't do... I can't wear what I'm wearing now that I had to... That I, could, that, that, that I was wearing three weeks ago or two weeks ago. It was a very different ball game. You actually have to adapt. I don't particularly like some of the changes. I welcome a lot of changes. But the thing is... I don't particularly like social media yet. It is a necessary evil, particularly in my business and things like this. But the thing is that we've got to recognize that the market landscape has changed. We've also got to adapt to it. And if we don't, people will fall behind. And when you fall behind, again, that's not going to lead to happiness because the thing is, you know you are behind the game. You know you are behind the mainstream in a lot of those things. Um, most people or most people who actually thrive for success will actually always want to be above that threshold they want to be above that baseline okay you, you raised a very good point because you, what you're talking now about is is optimizing yourself but not only optimizing yourself in your career but the progress you have in that career and we 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 did talk about this uh, again in terms of in terms of enjoying the journey and we talked about it in terms of goals and and needs and wants and the the art here is again one of perception because you, you kept on saying well look 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 you, you need to you need to check what, what do you need to replace goals with and I said well you it's about getting for getting uh, traveling as far along the journey as is compatible with your happiness and of course what I should have said is you replace goals with priorities because because the key thing about one of the key things about happiness is 
how much in control of your life you feel and need and goals are surrogate needs and needs